So good morning, New Hope. Good morning, PH. Good morning, everyone. My name is Leo. I am the pastor of PH Church. And here um, in this message, we're going to go. The series that you are going through right now is the snapshots of Mark. And as you know, something that I always like to do is I always like to ask questions. So we're going to start with a question, okay? I know, right? What? What? I mean, <laughs> all right. So let's start with a question. Let me ask you a question right now. How far are you willing to go for someone? Think about it. I want you to think about it. Like, really, really think about it. How far are you willing to go for someone? But let's make it a little bit more specific. Okay? How far are you willing to go for someone who is important to you? Makes it a little bit more clear, right? But let's bring that question a little bit closer, even. How far are you willing to go for someone you dearly love? My guess is the closer they are to you, the farther you're willing to go. Amen? Make sense? Yes? Yes? <laughs> So in this snapshot of the Gospel of Mark, we'll look at a story that will show us not just the power of friendship, not just the power of love, but also the transformative power of faith. This story shows how faith ought to transform us at, in our walk with Jesus. So if you have your Bibles with you, it doesn't matter if they're the digital kind or the traditional kind, what I always do with PH is I always ask them to bring your Bibles out, Bibles out. Bible's up, Bible's open. All right, let's open it to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. This is a little bit of a long one, so bear with me on this one, okay? <clears throat> You're maybe familiar with this story more or less. So, here we go. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left. There was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Now, since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof, above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Now some of the teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. <coughs> now let's get some information sorted out before we continue. We'll do that by asking questions. Me. So first, first question is, what do we know about the man who needed healing? Answer, very little, right? What we know is he was paralyzed, he was forgiven, he was healed, took up his mat, and walked out. That's as far as we know, right? So second, what do we know about the men, about the men who carried him? Again, the answer is very little, right? What we know is they carried him to the house, they dug through the roof, they had great faith. That's it. That's as far as we know, right? But there's another question that we need to consider. 
That question is, why? Why? Think about it. Aside from, why couldn't they wait for Jesus to get done or get to be outside? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is again, I don't know. I don't know, right? Not only that, but why? Why did the men do what they did? Think about it. Why did the men do what they did? Why did they have to go through all of that just to do what they did? The answer, to the, we have a possible answer to that. And it's this. Great friends love greatly. Amen. Amen. Great friends love greatly. And things, this brings us back to our first question. What may, what, how far are you willing to go for someone? But here's another one. Here's another one. I want you to think. I, I need you to, to, be, to be thinking right now. Do you know people? And I'm not talking about family. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about your children. But do you know people who are willing to go that far for you? Are they willing to break down walls and tear off the roof? I mean, I need you to think, do you know people in your life who are willing to break down walls and tear off the roof if they know that on the other side is your salvation, if on the other side is your healing, if on the other side is your peace, if on the other side is your joy and your happiness? Do you know people who are willing to break down the walls and tear off the roof for you? But wait, there's more. <laughs> Let's make it a little bit more personal, okay? We call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Amen. And, and this, this is a special time because we call ourselves brothers and sisters <laughs> in, in, in Christ and, and we have... PH people and New Hope people, and we have guests here today. The question is, are we willing to go that far for one another? I mean, look to your left and look to your right. Look at, look at the people around you right now. Are we willing to go that far for one another? Again, we're not talking about your family, we're not talking about your spouse, we're not talking about your children. Are we willing to go that far for the people around us? Because if, if, if we are brothers and sisters in Christ, we go to different churches, yes. We go to different churches, that is a fact, yes. But if we are brothers and sisters of Christ, and... I'm in a unique position because I am the pastor of PH, but I am also considered as a staff at New Hope. So I am speaking for both PH and New Hope. So the question is, are you willing to go that far for them? Are you willing to go that far for us? Are you willing to go that far for me? Amen. But wait. <laughs> There's still more. And I know by this time it's like, yeah, pa Pastor Leo, stop the pain. <laughs> right? Yeah, I will make it stop. I will make it stop. But I need us to be at this level because later I'll wrap this up with, with another story. I need, I need you to be at this level to bring that story home. Okay? So let's go even deeper. Are you willing to go that far? For a friend. Not a spouse. Not a family member. Not your children. Are you willing to go that far? For a friend. If you know that on the other side of that barrier, on the other side of that barrier is their salvation, on the other side is their healing, on the other side is their peace, on the other side is their joy, on the other side is their happiness, are you willing to go that far for a friend? Are you going to break that wall down? 
Are you gonna get are you gonna dig through that roof the way that man did? Why are we talking about this? Because again, great friends love greatly. But we need to break this down. I need you to think. I need you to think. In our life, there are people who we consider as friends. Yes? There are people that you consider as your friends. And then there are those who we consider as great friends. Right? Right? Yes, we all do. So here's a question for us. What makes a friend great? What makes a friend great? What makes them jump from just being a friend to being a great friend? I want you to think. Just think. What makes a friend great? But on top of that, there are people who love, and there are people who love greatly. Amen? Amen. So here's a new question for us. What makes a friend's love great? Because we talked about it. Great friends love greatly. What makes a friend great? And what makes a, what makes a person's love great? Something to think of, right? We keep saying great friends love greatly, but then you start defining that word, and then suddenly you're like, um, that's a good question, right? To find out, let's look at the men who carried the paralyzed man. Let's talk about what we don't know about them. First, we don't know their names. We don't know their names. Second, we don't know their relation to the man. We assume, I need you to go back to your text, that we assume that they're his friends, but the Bible doesn't specifically say so. We keep thinking they're his friends, but if you read your Bible again, it doesn't say friends. We just assume that they are. But in their anonymity, we see something else we see a lesson. That lesson is some of the most significant things you do in life you will never get acknowledgement or credit for. A.K.A. self-sacrifice. Okay. On this, the Bible doesn't just say anything. The Bible says a lot. We'll go through four of them right now. Let's go to Mark 9, verse 35. Mark 9, verse 35 says, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Here's another one. Luke 9, verse 24 says, For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Here's another one, Philippians 3, verse 8. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Amen. Here's another one too. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 16, verse 24 to 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must do what? Deny themselves. And do what? Take up their cross. And do what? Follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Amen? Amen? It's Matthew 16, verse 24 to 25. See, the Bible may be silent about their identity, but the Bible speaks volumes about their character. Amen? So here's the thing. Things that we know about. What do we know about them? Okay. They had compassion. The man had love and compassion for the paralyzed man. And they proved their love by their actions. Amen? Right? I need you to think. Think again. Most people love or claim to love, but few people show it. Right? They claim to love, but when you challenge them to show it, they stop there. These men loved the paralyzed man, and they showed it. 
They cared enough to get him to Jesus. Now compare them to the Pharisees who claimed to love God and others but didn't show it. In fact, compare them to people today, even so-called Christians, who claim to love God and love people but can't be bothered enough to show it. It's evident that they love their friends. It's very evident that they love their family. It's extremely evident that they love themselves. But love for God and love for people? Almost nothing. So let's go back to our original question. How far are you willing to go for someone? Because great friends do not just love greatly. Great friends do another thing. Great friends are determined to help. Not just help, they're determined to help. To see how determined they were, let's look at what the man had to overcome to get the paralyzed man to Jesus. First, they had to go through the crowd. They had to go through the crowd. Think about it. They had to go through the crowd. Have you ever seen a crowd where a famous and or a controversial figure is in public? Right? Think about it. Think about it. It's huge. It's packed. It's crowded. It's noisy. And Jesus was both controversial and a public figure. Imagine the crowd around that house. They had to go through it. He's in a house. He's in a house, and a big crowd is trying to get inside. They're trying to, 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 to go inside and around this house and see him and hear him talk. Many people may be saying, maybe he'll have another showdown with the religious leaders. That's fun, <laughs> right? Or maybe, maybe, maybe we'll even see him perform miracles. That's even more fun, right? See, at some point, if you think about it, if you think about it, you put yourself in the shoes of those men. At some point, even if you pay me huge amounts of money, I will think no money is worth through going through all of this. Right? No money is worth this. You can keep your money. I'm keeping my sanity. <laughs> Moms? Right? <laughs> you can keep your money. I'm keeping my sanity. Teachers, <laughs> right? At some point, see, at some point, love must come into play. Amen. Amen? At some point, love will come into play. Because if there is no love, that draws the line. But if there is love, that extends that line even farther. So at some point, love must come into play. You see, even today, there is a point or there is a line that we are not willing to cross unless love is involved. Amen? Amen? Second point, they had to climb the stairs. They had to climb the stairs carrying the man. They had to climb the stairs carrying a paralyzed man. Medical professionals, especially nurses, know this. It's hard to carry a paralyzed man. Why? Because of dead weight. Moms, you ever try carrying a, a sleeping child? It's harder than carrying a child that is awake. Amen? Why? Because of dead weight. Because of all that weight that's just on your shoulders and on your arms. So they must go through the crowd somehow while carrying dead weight and take him to the roof on stairs and ladders that are not handicap accessible. <laughs> there's, no, there's no elevators during that time. Just saying. They don't have ramps, right? They just had stairs at the side of the house going up and you have to go through it somehow carrying a paralyzed man. Think about it. Think of the logistics. At some point, you will have to say, I don't want to do this anymore unless love is involved. Third 
Third, they had to break up the tithing. It's not their house. Think, it's not their house. They must commit vandalism, <laughs> destruction of personal property. Right? And then lower him down safely, somehow. Right? So think, after all of this is done, the probability of the owner of the house who will say, like, what, what's the probability of the owner of the house coming up to them and saying, hey, you know what? You did something good, so just forget about it, you guys. <laughs> forget about the cost of fixing that roof. I mean, you help the paralyzed man. Come on. Right? What is the probability of that happening? Close to zero. If you, have a, if you have a house, if you're the owner of a house, somebody breaks that roof, they're paying for it. <laughs> right? So, they are aware that this is really literally going to cost them. It's really going to cost them. So once again, there will come a point where we will just give up. But think, they didn't. They didn't. They were willing to go through all of it. Why? Because of money? Not likely. Because they cared about the guy? Most probably. Make sense? Right? And when they did go through all of it, what happened? Not only these men, not only the paralyzed man, but the crowd as well. They became witnesses to a miracle. Amen? Not just a physical healing, but more importantly, a spiritual Amen. restoration. Can we give God some praise right now? Woo! Give it up. Give it up. See, here's the thing. Determination, and, and herein lies the lesson. Challenges can cost the most. But challenges that cost the most, they're the ones who pay the most. Amen. Amen? Challenges that cost the most, they're the ones who pay the most. Determination can overcome great obstacles. The problem with many Christians today, we give up too easily. We just give up too easily. We expect God to make everything easy. But God did not promise health, wealth, and prosperity. He never promised health, wealth, and prosperity for his followers. It's exactly the opposite. If we go to John 16, verse 33, it says there, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. See, peace. Not health, not wealth, not prosperity. You will have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen? We talked about this before when I was here last time. God pruning us, God hurting us, God giving us and making us go through suffering is not evidence of God's lack of love. God pruning us is the evidence that he does. Think. I want you to think. Most who serve Jesus had to overcome great obstacles. The apostles had to overcome great obstacles. Paul had to overcome great obstacles. People today who believe him, who are not in this country, who are outside the country, who are in countries where Christianity is illegal, have to overcome great obstacles. We have it so easy, but they have to go through great obstacles. So we go back to the first question. How far are you willing to go for someone? Why? Because the third thing that great friends do, great friends take their friends to Jesus. Amen. When they went through all of it, when they were willing to go to great lengths to bring their friend to Jesus, what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us Jesus saw their faith, not his faith, their faith. Not just the faith of the paralyzed man. He saw their faith. Jesus also saw the faith of his friends. And what 
was Jesus' response. Jesus loved the man enough to give him what, not just what he wanted, not just what he wanted, Jesus gave him what he needed. <coughs> Physical and spiritual healing. Physical and spiritual restoration. And when that happened, the people were amazed. They glorified God. And they said something. They said something. Remember, remember this. They said, we never saw anything like this before. We never saw anything like this before. See, I promised, I promised you I'd end with a story, and here it is. Do you know Ray Comfort? Ray Comfort is the founder and CEO of Living Waters Ministries. He's also an evangelist. He's also a street preacher out in California. And in one of his online blogs, he shared a letter that he received from an atheist. I'm going to let you I'm going to I'm going to let you in on what the letter says, but remember this comes from an atheist. So there's a little bit of something there. Okay? <laughs> But let me share with you what the atheist wrote in that letter. You ready? Are you ready? Yes. But don't think that this is a letter from the atheist to Ray Comfort. Think that this is an atheist speaking to you. Okay? Here we go. Do you consider yourself to be compassionate of other humans? If you're right, as you say you are and believe that, then how can you sleep at night? How can you sleep at night? When you speak with me, you're speaking with someone who you believe is walking directly into eternal damnation, which your loving God created, yet you stand by and do nothing. You should be running the streets mad with rage at their blindness. That's equivalent to standing on a street corner. And watching every person that passes you walk blindly, directly into the path of a bus and die, yet you stand idly by and do nothing. Imagine the horrors hell must have in store if the Bible is true. You're just going to allow that to happen and not care about saving anyone but yourself? If you're right, then you are uncaring, unemotional, and purely selfish something that has no right to talk about subjects such as love and caring. Let's call the worship team back on the stage. Once again, let me just, remember, let me just remind you of the first question that we have. How far... Are you willing to go for someone? So here's an encouragement for us. Jesus sees your faith. Jesus sees our faith. I know it's hard and sometimes the Goliaths in our paths, the Goliaths in our ways seem impossible to overcome. Following Jesus is not easy. It is not easy. And God never promised an easy life for us. But there will be a time when Jesus will respond to our faith. Jesus will respond to your faith. And when that happens, I want, I want you to think. People will be amazed. People will be amazed of who you are and what you're doing. They are going to glorify God. And they will say, you know what? We have never saw anything like this before. Amen. We've never seen anything like this before. So don't give up. Great friends love greatly. Amen. So love greatly. So we will tie this up with a time of communion because this is the perfect time because we have been talking about communion and why not do it? Let's celebrate it with a time of communion. I want everyone to stand up. See, this is an encouragement for all of us. Don't, don't just do communion. Don't just do communion. Take this opportunity to commune with Jesus. Take this opportunity to allow him to give you encouragement and strengthen your faith. 
let this be a reminder for us not just of what Jesus did but also how far he was willing to go for us this is how much he loves us great friends love greatly look around you this is the community we are brothers and sisters in Christ it doesn't matter if you go to New Hope it doesn't matter if you go to BH it doesn't matter if you go to any other church we are brothers and sisters in Christ. This is our faith family. Commune with God. Commune with one another. And isn't it awesome? Like even later, we're going to have a time. We're going to have potluck. And it is a time when we celebrate being a community. as we go into this time of communion we celebrate communion here and we call it an open communion it's just a fancy way of saying that it doesn't matter what church you go to the only thing that we ask is if you're going to take communion with us is you have a relationship with our Lord Jesus and you have been given those cups they have the bread and the juice in them if you open it and you get to the juice, you've gone a little bit too far. There's a fine line between the bread and the juice, so just back it up a little bit. <laughs> okay? But as we do, I again invite you, don't just take communion. Commune with God. Commune with Jesus. Commune with the Father. Commune with Him. He's here for you. He wants you. He's here. He loves you. Great friends love greatly. How far are we willing to go for our brothers and sisters in Christ?